The new way of using virtual drumline in Sibelius 5 gives you a new way of thinking about how to actually control some of the, the more detail-oriented elements of, of certain instruments. Uh, if you're familiar with virtual drumline, you'll know that, for example, if you want to have your snare line play in the center of the head as opposed to the edge of the head, you can control those things uh, based on the setting of your mod wheel, or depending on how your mod wheel is set, your tenor line will play back either short decrescendo or crescendo buzz rolls, or medium length or long length, or key switches can uh, control whether your tenors or bass line instruments play back as puffy mallets or regular sticks, or it'll turn your drum set snares on or off. Uh, the mod wheel can control whether or not your timpani or xylophone or marimbas will be playing rolls or whether or not you'll be playing dead strokes or muffled hits or birch shafts of mallets um, or glissandi in the xylophones. The mod wheel has uh, various functions depending on the instrument. And the way we used to have to type that into virtual drumline was with uh, technique text that looks something like this. We'd type in a tilde so that this is hidden and didn't print in your score. Then we'd type in C one had to be a capital C and that means controller one and then we'd say like 127 would mean that the the value of that controller is all the way up once you get used to that that's not terribly difficult but to the uninitiated that can be a bit uh, cryptic and, and uh, you know it's a little hard to remember sometimes what settings certain things in certain instruments need to be set to so rather than doing that now all we're going to do is uh, type in words, or certain articulations now will control some of those things without you manually needing to intervene. So just to show uh, the snare drum line example, we're going to go from the center of the head to the edge of the head. So for starters, I'm just going to play or type in a, a quick little rhythm here. I'll type in some paradiddles, right, left, and this is just me typing on the MIDI keyboard, right, right, left, right left left and uh, let's tape a uh, eighth note accent and a couple sixteen notes and maybe a little buzz roll here quarter note okay so with that entered in there I'm just gonna select that whole bar and hit R which is gonna repeat it into the next bar and right here is where we want the snare drummers to go to the edge of the drum so I'm going to hit Command T or Control T if you're on Windows. That's going to do technique text. And with my blinking cursor, I can start typing. I'm just going to say edge. With that there now, uh, when we play back, we should hear center here. And then when we get to this bar, it should go to the edge of the drum. And just so we can see the mod wheel moving, I'm going to actually open up the mixer. And uh, we'll actually open up the, the contact player so we can view the mod wheel right here while it's playing back. You should see that move as soon as it sees the word edge. Okay, so that was all automatically handled. I didn't have to remember what setting to put the mod wheel to. Um, that's just intelligently handled because it's programmed into the sound set and into how Sibelius knows how to interpret it. If we wanted it to be halfway, we would have just typed in the word halfway, and it would know what to do with that. Another example would be for the tenor line instrument. Let's just type in a, a quick little tenor part here. Um, and just uh, we'll go down the drums a little here. Okay, um, but we want that to actually be played with puffies. If I play that back just as its normal default self, it'll play back with regular sticks. Okay, if uh, that was intended to be a, a phrase for soft mallets, we just type in the word puffies and we didn't need to enter any sort of key switch. Sibelius just knows because we're using the template and the sound set. Same thing could be applied to the bass drums. Um, we'll just move these down so it's an accurate part. Without the word puffies, 
I'm just going to select the word puffies and paste it there. There you go. If we want to immediately go back to regular mallets, um, I'll type in another part here. Okay, it's a little little messy as I'm going quickly here. Uh, we just type the word in, um, nat for natural. We should actually hear, if we start here at the puffies, you'll hear it go from puffies to natural mallets. Okay, so that's uh, the type of thing that can be very time-saving uh, in, in comparison to the way we used to have to do it. I'll go to the end of the score here, add a few more bars. Let's show um, another valuable tool. Uh, I'm just going to type in a few notes in the xylophone staff. And let's just type a half note, and we're going to actually put a... Uh, three slashes, so this is a roll. Let's type another one, and then a whole note, which will also have the slashes. Um, before, what we had to do when we encountered this is we'd again have to put another C1, 127, which would move the mod wheel up. That would play back the rolls. We'd also have to open up the property palette, go to playback, deselect the tremolo so that Sibelius didn't try to. Um, mock up that tremolo. But now, because it knows we're using a virtual drum line and we're using the sound set, it knows when it sees those slashes that that's going to play the sampled role and it knows not to create a synthetic role. Okay, so those are the actual sampled roles. Those aren't synthetically created roles. And uh, again, it just knows because we're playing a xylophone instrument from virtual drumline that that's how it's going to perform it. The same would apply to marimbas, timpani, um, buzz rolls in the concert snare, buzz rolls in the snare line. You don't have to turn off that tremolo marking anymore. It, it automatically knows how to handle those sorts of things. So that's just a few examples of how the playback dictionary has been configured within the template and within the sound set so that you don't have to do as much work.